Get ready for a look for less project you'll have to see to believe. These framed flower art pictures can run you $250 easily, but I'll show you how to make it more affordably for only about 20 bucks. Plus as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hey guys, it's Aneka and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today I'm super excited because I have a collaboration for you guys and it's with some ladies that I love watching and hopefully you will love them too. So the first channel is called Mama Makes It Happen. Every time I watch one of her videos, I feel like I'm just sitting down with an old friend chatting. This woman has six kids and she does it beautifully she does diy she does dinners i just absolutely love her channel the second channel is jesenia a mom's life and when i tell you guys this woman is like cleaning goals not only does she do clean with me she also does beautiful decoration she does diys she is just an all-around beautiful person and i love her channel so i wanted to team up with them today and bring you guys some spring diys that you are going to love so head over to their channels after you watch this and let them know that i sent you if you're new to my channel welcome on my channel you're gonna see fun diys plus i always like to throw in a little treat at the end just to keep life a little bit sweet if you like what you see please go ahead and subscribe. So guys, the DIY that I have planned today, I actually had a little bit of a different idea of how I was gonna do one part of it, but I got these Arteza art supplies and I was like, let me just go ahead and play around with it. And you guys, I'm in love. I absolutely love how it came out. And so I decided that I wanna do a giveaway on my channel of some of their art supplies. So if you are not subscribed, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be giving you guys some details on how you can enter that giveaway in an upcoming video. Okay guys, it's time to get started. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up at the end and leave me a comment down below. Let's get started. Okay guys, let's craft. I started out by getting these paint stirring sticks from Lowe's. They are 97 cents a pack and they come with three sticks. I ended up needing two packs to frame out this project board that I got from Dollar Tree. So in order to frame out the longest side of my project board, I needed to put two sticks together. So I cut one to about 17 and a quarter inches. And that's basically just cutting off the end that you would hold it on. And I cut a second stick to be about 12 and a half inches. Now guys, you really are going to need to measure your project board. I actually got three project boards because I wanted to make one of these for each of my kids and they all were drastically different in their sizes. Even just a quarter of an inch is going to make a difference. So make sure you measure your board before you do your cuts. I just put them together to make sure they were long enough and now I'm ready to do the shorter sides of my board. So I put my cut sticks on the top and bottom because I wanted to include that in the measurements for my shorter side. Once you get it lined up, you can kind of see exactly where you're gonna to need to cut. So I just took a pencil, drew a line, and that let me know where I needed to cut. Now the sides ended up being another 17 and a quarter and then one that was three and a quarter. Next, I just took some sandpaper and sanded down any rough edges. And you guys, I am not a carpenter, so even something as simple as cutting a straight line on these sticks, I butchered it a little bit. So I really needed this sandpaper to smooth things out. Once I had it sanded, I was ready to stain it. I'm gonna do a faux stain because I didn't have any actual stain and I didn't wanna buy any. So I used this trick. I got some brown chalk paint and added some water. I used about equal parts chalk paint and water, but you can play around and see what gives you the look that you like. Once I had it the consistency that I wanted it, I went ahead and painted my paint right onto my wood pieces and then immediately wiped it off with a paper towel. 
Now by doing this, it got a beautiful stained look. You can still see the grains in the wood and it just looks amazing. You would never know that this was just a paint stirring stick that I got for three for a dollar. Once I stained all of my pieces, I grabbed these letters. Now, these letters I found at Walmart, they were $1.08 a piece. I did not include this in the price of the DIY because this is just something extra I'm doing. I actually wanted to make this picture for Easter. It's a nice spring pop of color, but after Easter's done, I wanna put my daughter's name in it and be able to put this up in her room. So I got these letters and they're already kind of whitewashed and they're not actually wood. So instead of sanding the whitewash off of the front, I decided to stain right over it and it came out looking awesome. It kind of looks like a wood grain because I painted over that white. After everything's dry, I'm just going to go back over it and seal my chalk paint. Now I used this acrylic sealer. You could also use wax or whatever you'd like to seal your wood. Once that's done, I'm ready to assemble my frame. Now, because these are paint stirring sticks, they do have kind of a ruler on the bottom of one side. I wanna make sure that I glue these sticks together so that those measurements are at the bottom and then you won't be able to see them after we add our flowers. Now, I am using a glue gun just for the sake of filming this tutorial. I needed the paint to dry very quickly but I would actually recommend using Gorilla Glue or even E6000. I think it would give you a better look, it would have less of a separation, and it would just be much more sturdy for you. You are going to need to let those adhesives dry overnight, and that's why I wasn't able to do it now. Although, to be honest, this did stay together really well with the hot glue. So I glued all of my sides together, making sure to keep the ruler part of it on the bottom and now I'm just gluing it onto my project board. Now you're going to need to hold this pretty flush to the project board especially the ones from Dollar Tree they're not always exactly flat so you want to make sure that you hold it exactly where you want it to stay. Then I just ran another bead of glue right in that seam to give it a little extra hold. I did the same thing to the bottom and then I was ready to do the sides. Now you want to make sure that you go along the project board, but also you want to put some glue along your top and bottom edges of the frame. This will make sure that it all sticks together very nicely and gives you a very nice framed out look. You guys, I cannot believe I put together this beautifully stained frame for only $3. It's amazing. Next. Like I said, I wanted to make this for Easter, but also have the option of changing out what I had on it. So I decided to glue these little beads right onto my project board. And these are just some little wood beads that I got at Michael's. I did about three inches down and three inches in, and that's gonna give me something from which to hang anything that I want to put on top of my flowers. And now it's time for the fun part all of these beautiful flowers. So I got these from the Dollar Tree. These are peonies. Peonies, is that how you say them? Um, I'm not sure how you say it, but I think they are gorgeous. And I chose them also because they have a bit of a bigger flower on them. You could do roses or anything like that, but it will take you a ton more. As it is, it took me about 15 bunches to cover the whole thing. So I removed all the flowers from their stems and then I had to go back through and snip off the little green part that was holding them onto the stems. Once I did that, I was ready to take my flowers and glue them on. Now, initially I wanted to try to do kind of like an ombre effect, but I realized that I could not find enough of each color of flower. You know at Dollar Tree they have the flower wall and it's kind of like what you see is what you get. So because I couldn't find the exact number I wanted, I just decided to mix them all up and put them on the board. And to be honest with you guys, I think this came out so beautifully. I love how the mix of colors just pops and brings out all these beautiful spring tones. My girls are gonna love all the pink in it and I just cannot get enough of it. 
So you're just going to glue all your flowers on in a row. Each row of mine took about eight to nine flowers. I just glued right around those little beads that I put on there. They're hidden in there too. And continue going until you fill up the entire board. Next, I'm going to go back through and fill in any spaces that look like they might be a little bit empty. I'll just pop an extra flower right in there. After that was done, I thought it needed just a little bit of greenery. So I pulled some of the leaves off of the picks of flowers that I had gotten from Dollar Tree, and I just decided to put a few here and there inside of the picture. You can put as much or as little greenery as you want. You can get some different greenery or baby's breath, whatever you want to jazz this up. Once that was done, I was ready to see how the letters of my daughter's name fit on there. So I put all the letters right on top and kind of figured out how I wanted them spread. Then I got some of this jute twine and I'm just going to tie a little knot and make a loop. And that loop is going to go right over the little bead that I hid inside the flowers. I pulled my twine all the way across all of my letters just so that I can measure how long I needed it to be to reach the other peg. Once I did that, I picked one of the letters and I just held on to it in the exact spot that it needed to be on the twine, just long enough so that I could add a little dab of hot glue to glue it to my twine. This way I kind of knew where all the rest of my letters needed to be in relation to this one letter. Once I glued all the letters onto my garland, I was able to add it back to my flower art by just slipping those little loops right over the beads that I put inside the flowers. And you guys, I absolutely love how this came out. This looks so high end. I wish the picture did it justice, but it just doesn't. The colors are so vibrant and beautiful and I am just in love. And now on to the real reason why I even started this project, which was to make a spring and Easter decoration. I got this little bunny from Party City and I was going to cover him with some contact paper that looked like wood so it would match the frame. But at the last minute, I decided that I wanted to paint him instead. So I had acrylic paints to do that and he was a little slippery. So I decided to paint him first with some white chalk paint just to make it easier to paint. And you guys, I got my hand, my hands on some of this Arteza acrylic paint. And once I opened the box, I knew that I needed to use this for my Easter project. These are all metallic colors and I used the metallic deep brown, but I am so psyched to use these in some more Easter projects. And you'll see in a minute, it, it's just beautiful. I've never played with a paint that has this kind of a metallic shine to it and I loved how my little bunny came out. So like I said I decided to use the metallic deep brown on my bunny and I'm just painting all over him and I'm hoping this will give kind of like a bronzed look kind of like how I enjoy the galvanized steel with the wood but with more of a metallic bronze instead. So I needed to do about two coats of this metallic deep brown paint and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it but in the end it looked beautiful. All the little brush strokes kind of made it look like a hammered metal and it's so shiny. I wish you guys could see in real life, but it just came out beautifully. I love it. And you guys are going to see more projects with this and also this glitter that I got because, well, it's my new favorite right about now. Now, because I didn't use the side with the face, I wanted to just add a little pop of color to my bunny. 
so I decided to use a little flower for his fluffy tail. So I just glued that right onto him. And then all I needed to do was string a little bit of jute twine right through the holes that were already in his ears. And then I was able to hang him on my sign. Once again, this came out beautifully. I love the wood with the metal look. It's, it's just gorgeous and I cannot wait to put this out for Easter. And then I'll be ready to switch it up and put it in the girls room. And now it's time to eat. So today, instead of a recipe, I'm showing you a quick and easy little Easter bunny themed snack that you can make for your kids, for classes, anything you want. So we're going to start out with some wax paper, and I have these safety lollipops. These are ones that come with loops instead of sticks. I cut my wax paper to be about 4 inches by 4 inches. I would start with that. You can make it smaller if your fingers are, are more dexterous than mine. I get shaky hands sometimes, so I wanted to make mine nice and big. So I just covered it up, tied a little ribbon right around, made sure to pull the safety pops apart to make it look like little bunny ears. Next I'm going to add a little dab of glue, add a cotton tail, and that's it. These are adorable, they're easy for me to give to my kids, I could take them to their school or to church, and they're just a fun little Easter snack. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs and a little treat to go along with it. This has been one of my favorites, so I really do hope you try it. Let me know down in the comments if you do. Also, don't forget to go and check out my friends' channels, Yesenia, A Mom's Life, and Mama Makes It Happen. If you go over to their channels, make sure you let them know I sent you. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week when we repeat it all again.